certain things. In all of these, you must listen. Okay? If you are into business or you have something you do, don't hesitate to push it. Push it. Announce it. Let the angels continue from there. Push it. Push the works of your hands. Announce it. Tell someone else about it. Take advantage of God's grace. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Take advantage of it. Glory to God. All right. I want to do a very quick one. Okay. I want to give you seven ways God blesses men. Of course, there are more than seven ways, but these are the seven that the Spirit of God asked me to share. Number one, by pronouncement. By pronouncement or invocation. Okay? That means that God commanding blessings upon you. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, remember them? Adam and Eve. Okay? When he made man, actually. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God's blessings upon man. When God invoked this. When he pronounced this upon them, they automatically began to dominate. He started working in their lives. God's pronouncement. For instance, what I've been saying since declaring words into your life, that's from the mouth of Almighty God. God does this through men of God today. Or through those in higher authority in spiritual things. Pronouncing blessings into your life. You must never joke with it. Words are very important in this kingdom. Words make us, words break us. Whatever God is going to give you in this kingdom, in this kingdom, listen, he does it by words. He does it by words. He doesn't stretch forth his hand to rub your head, to rub your body, or bring the calf physically. No, words. He uses words. And he will look for a faithful vessel, or a vessel that has positioned himself well. And then through that vessel, he will release these words. Your own responsibility is to believe this word. You believe it, it will begin to work in your life. Words. When God wanted to make Solomon, Solomon wise, he spoke. Words. Words. We just read now, when God wanted to bless this man, Adam, he spoke words and blessed him. Words, so important. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3 to 4. Deuteronomy 28, verse 3 to 4. Blessed shall thou be in the city. This is God talking. And blessed shall thou be in the field. In the fourth verse, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. Words, pronouncing blessings, declaring blessings upon their lives. Brothers and sisters, I will urge you not to joke with words coming from the man of God, a true man of God. Glory to God. Words are powerful. I believe it's in the message, the power of God. I'm not sure. I was telling you how Dangote became rich, very rich true words from a man of God by the name Archbishop Benson in Daosa. Or rather, you didn't know. You thought the guy just made some money, just worked hard, and everything happened. <laughs> Listen, this realm you are in, nothing happens by itself. Nothing happens. Don't be deceived. If you were told that something just happened because of some things, no. Uh, your hard work, your effort, you have been deceived. There are things that are backing it up. Nothing happened by itself. That man he is the man with the most money in Africa as we speak. But yet, once upon a time, he honored a man of God. And the man of God released words into his life. That man of God is no more here. The, the man of God actually said that his business will go all over the world. And that's what is happening right now. The words of that man of God is still working. Words. Words. The word of a man of God will outlive him. That's how powerful words are. Don't joke with words. So God doesn't joke with words either. And so... When he releases blessings into our lives, he does it through words. Words. That's the first way. And I don't want you to ever forget it. When Balak called for Balaam, Balaam, the man of God, the prophet of God, Balak the king called for him to come and curse the children of Israel. When he showed up there and was about to curse them, he couldn't curse them. Why? Because they've been blessed. And God took over his mouth and he started blessing them instead. The power of words. Don't ever joke with words. Don't think, well, I'm just in a service and one man of God is just, or one pastor is just saying something, so I'm saying amen. If you don't receive it, you cheat yourself. There is no other way in this kingdom. That's the fact. There is no other way. If I'm going to transfer anything 
from me or from my ministry into your life i will only do it by words if i'm going to move you to the next level of your life by the anointing i will only do it by words even if i will lay hands on you words will have to come out first words 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 so important words the power of words and that's the same thing here now god pronounces blessing that's the first way that he blesses men number two by putting the right people in your life by putting the right people in your life you see you have to understand that god does put the right people in our lives we may not take this seriously but it's so important that you know this the right people in your life it may be your father it may be your mother maybe your cousin maybe your uncle you see some people have street fathers they don't understand why their father is just so street maybe because of your destiny the kind of destiny you have so you need a father that will be able to train you in a tough way so that you not go the other way for some people it's their mom some people have mothers that are always there just to counsel them just to teach them correctly always there okay these are people that god gave you as blessings it's a blessing of god it's one of the ways that god blesses men put the right people in your life uncle cousin friends there are some friends that god puts in our lives that they can go any length some of them maybe you are here right now it's a friend that brought you here and since you've been coming here you see your life has changed your life has moved you see that's that's the right person in your life at that time this is all for your destiny god will look at your destiny and put the kind of people that you require for you to move to the next level of your life or for you to fulfill that destiny we we'll put them in your life don't take them for granted don't be too pompous and proud it may be teachers even in school there are some people that have teachers as the right people in their lives in their school primary or secondary school bishop david Oedipo, of course tells the story all the time how the teacher it was the teacher who led him to christ the right people it may be your neighbor maybe your lecturer it may even be your pastor you see that the right people glory to god let's just look at a few example proverbs proverbs chapter number four verse three into five actually now here is solomon the wisest man that ever lived before before shout it before before jesus solomon was the wisest man that ever lived before jesus and here 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 is testimony you know when we read about solomon we say wow the guy is so wise in fact he's wise before wisdom came because you see how can god ask that choose anything and he chose wisdom he's really wise but hear what he said in the third verse he said for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Says he taught me also. His father taught him. His father's name was David. Taught him also. And said unto me, let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Next verse. Get wisdom. Get understanding. And if you listen to Solomon, when God asks him, what do you want? Just mention anything. Solomon said, I want wisdom. I want an understanding heart. He learned it from his father. You see that? learned it from his father so his father was the right person that was put in his life and for choosing for making that wise choice his own life was transformed nobody will talk about rich guy today in this world without mentioning solomon in fact according to history and um, research it has been said that as we speak nobody yet has as much money as solomon had nobody yet you know, because they didn't know that uh, Apostle Victor Peter is somewhere. They don't, yes, they don't know that I do. So, oh, they are saying what they thought. <laughs> I'm a joint heir with Christ. Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus said a greater than Solomon is here. And that Jesus, I'm a joint heir with him. So, I'm richer than Solomon. Excuse me. Glory to God. In First Samuel chapter number 3, First Samuel chapter number 3, all right, you have to read the whole chapter on your own. The Lord puts in the life of a Samuel, the right pastor by the name Eli God showed up and you know wanted to talk to Samuel and God called him three times all the time God was calling him he didn't know he didn't know that was the voice of God he had not learned it and he had to run to his spiritual father and his spiritual father Eli who was also his pastor taught him and said the Bible says he perceived that the boy has heard the Lord he perceived that God spoke to the boy and so Eli had to teach him educate him in spiritual things say so next time when you hear that voice say speak lord for thy servant hear it now if he had not taught him he would keep running to eli he may even ignore it but thank god he taught him and it was when he taught him and he responded correctly that god spoke 
before that time god did not speak god just kept but god saw him when he was running to eli to ask did you call me god did not stop him you see that but thank god for eli eli taught him correctly and when he was taught what happened god spoke and god delivered the message into his life glory to god hallelujah that's the right pastor all right let's look at the, the ninth verse just to portray that therefore eli said unto samuel go lie down and it shall be if it call thee that thou shalt say speak lord for thy servant hear it so samuel went and lay in his place and truly god spoke the right pastor the right pastor some of you you ignore people in your life hey hey, hey. this is your pride <laughs> You will soon know the day will come that you soon know the importance of men. Now you may not, I don't need anybody for anything. I don't need anybody. No, you are not yet married. <laughs> Even beginning from your wedding, when you when your wife you want to marry, right? You like the lady, she's your sweet sugar pie, right? You want to marry her, but she will not just jump at you, she will ask you, Who are your parents? Family members. It's also and it will also be shameful if on the day of your introduction or wedding or whatever ceremony and you show up there no family member is there that's when you know the importance of men okay don't ignore men especially those that god has put in your life finally on that exodus chapter number 18 if you read from 13 down the bible talks about a wonderful father-in-law that was put in the life of moses that was the right person god put him as a blessing to the life of moses moses was this passionate pastor in the wilderness okay and in fact this was after the, he had led the children of Israel out of Egypt. And by himself, Moses would attend to everybody. And we are talking about millions of people. And these people always had issues. You have to understand they were carnal men. Sensuous. Always fighting. Always had argument. Always had one thing. And they would come. You know, they would come, line up in front of Moses. For him to judge who is right or who is wrong. To bring them the word of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord. And these people will stand. From morning to night, the Bible says. Because one person attending to these people, and they'll come in their thousands and tens of thousands. And this pastor will sit down, attending to them one after the other. It was not wise. And so the father-in-law came, you know, came to that place. And after Moses had told him everything that the Lord has been doing in their midst, he said, wow, that's great. But there's something I need to tell you. This thing you're doing is not wise. It will destroy you. You want to die before your time. Moses said, no. He said, all right, adjust this thing. Choose men, some over thousands, some over hundreds, some over 50. As leaders, you need to trust them. Men who know the truth and let them be in charge. You teach them and they will teach the people. So you won't be doing all this by yourself. And Moses heeded this. And in fact, the Lord supported what that man, that man, that father-in-law said. You see, that's the right man. So there are, there, there are times that you need the right people. You want to go in the wrong direction. You just need somebody at that moment to speak the right words into your life. To correct you. To instruct you. But when you are too proud, you say, oh, I will go my own way. Destruction. Destruction. The way that cement right unto man leads to destruction. The end thereof leads to destruction. Number three. Number three. We are talking about how God blesses man. Number three. He prospers the works of your hands. That's another way that God blesses you. The works of your hand. For those of you that don't have anything you're doing. And you want money to come. You're joking. Alright. You are joking. It's so important that you have something you're doing. Because if God is going to work. He will work with the works of your hand. He's going to prosper what you have. You are not working anywhere. You are not doing any business. You're not doing anything. And say, Father, let money just come. No, it doesn't work like, like that way. You will need a channel through which God will bless you. He will multiply it. That's the reason for all this. We are teaching you now. Pronouncing blessings into your life. Into the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. All that you, you, you put your hand on. That's what he's talking about. And in the, in the sixth verse of the same chapter, same book. NLT. He says, wherever you go and whatever you do will be blessed. You must have something you are doing. Whatever you do, you will do something. Not that you stay, you cross your leg and say, oh, Father, let money. No, not that way. Okay. Number four, the right connections. God blesses you with the right connections. These are the ways he blesses. He blesses with the right connections. Alright, the right connections. Genesis chapter number 12. 
Read it from the 10th into 16 verses. Okay, Genesis 12, 10. All right, I wanted to see something very interesting there. Anyway, maybe I should just narrate what is there. Okay, all right, God had asked Abraham to move. Um, yes, Abraham to move. And then Abraham, because of famine, came to this land of Egypt. And when he entered the place, Pharaoh fell in love with Abraham's wife. He saw Sarah, a very beautiful woman, and said, Ha, I want her. Well, by the way, something started like relationship. And along the way, because he thought Abraham was the what it was now going to be his in-law, the Bible says he gave Abraham stuff. You know how God can organize some things for you and organize some connections just because he wants to put money into your hands. You see, if you are not wise, you'll be arguing. You say, me? God forbid. Unbeliever, never. Listen, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Say, I will never be foolish. Say, I'm wise. The Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Right? Make sure there is no yoke that is joining both of you together. That's what I'm trying to let you know. But if you are not going to do business with unbelievers, then you have to check out of this world. Otherwise, when you open your shop, put it there, a sticker. No unbeliever should come here to buy. Onga we. <laughs> In fact, many times, some of them can be reckless with money. As you call the price. You know how they got the money. That's their business. So they don't, they don't, they don't bother to price it. They just pay. A child of God who has the wisdom of God working will show up. The moment you are even calling the price, the Holy Spirit is saying he wants to cheat you. He wants to cheat you. Is it me? You will now cheat. You can't cheat me. Me. I'm talking about me. How God deals with me because when I'm in a place and I want to get something, if something is wrong there, my spirit will not settle. When I walk away from there, I will now discover that, ah, that woman wanted to cheat me. But there are unbelievers that have no sense. I'm not talking about the poor one. No. Don't, don't hold tight to poor unbeliever. What are you doing with him? I'm talking about the loaded ones. And it's true. I'm telling you the fact. Paul said, if you don't want to deal with them, then you have to check out of this world. But as long as you are in this world, physically, then you have to meet them. They will patronize you. Some of them will come and buy cars from you. See, I receive it. Ah, yeah. Prophetic words are coming. You are just looking at eh? car. Ah. Hey. Is it, should I say some of them will come and buy Gadi from you? Is it Gadi you want to be selling? Glory to God. All right. So don't ignore. There are some connections that may not look like it. Like, is this, is this really healthy? But the Lord, that's where the Lord will grant you wisdom. Wisdom on how to deal with these people and yet you don't fall. You don't dance to their tune. You don't follow their ways. That's how Jesus did. Go and study about Jesus. I follow Jesus a lot. Study about Jesus. He sat down with them and ate with them. And that was how he was able to, you know, preach this thing to them. Some of them did not believe. Did Jesus change from being Jesus? Oh, glory to God. Alright. So the right connections. And for Abraham, that was what happened. So when Abraham, you know, the wife, now, Pharaoh had started acting like I want to my in-law. So he gave the in-law a lot of things. <laughs> then later on he discovered that Sarah was Abraham's wife. Because you see, Abraham had said, please say you are my sister to Sarah. And Sarah had gotten there and said, I'm, I'm his sister. So that was how Pharaoh said, you, you, this is your sister. You people are blessed in your house. So I mean, didn't know that was the wife. But as a result, watch this. God warned Pharaoh. Some things came up and you know, Pharaoh had to let them go. But before Abraham left, he became loaded. 13th chapter, verse 1. I want you to see what happened. This was after Abraham left. Wisdom is working. 13th chapter, verse 1. Oh, Abraham left Egypt and traveled north into the Negev. Can you see that now? He, he just left Egypt along with his wife and Lot and all that they own. Next verse. Abraham was very rich. This was not said before now. Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Became loaded. No, 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 no. I don't want to do any business with you. Do you speak with tongues? You don't speak tongues. No business. So. Hey. Glory to God. Money itself is dirty. Do you understand? Money is dirty. But when it comes into the hands of, <laughs> of a Christian, you sanctify it. Eh? Otherwise, hunger. You need money to do things. That will be for another day. Number five. Number five. God blesses with wealth and riches. Wealth and riches. Wealth and riches. Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. 
and thou shalt not borrow. Ah, that is wealth. Do you know I didn't really recognize that it was saying, and thou shalt lend unto many nations. You know, we used to say, and thou shalt lend unto many. Not many, oh, many nations. That's wealth. Lending to nations. That's we real wealth. And God does this. He pushes his children into wealth. He will train you a certain period of time. Afterwards, he will push you into it. So that when you get there, it will not destroy you. This is one way also that God blesses his children. We are almost there now. Okay. Alright, let's look at Job chapter 22. Verse 24. Job 20, one of my favorite scriptures. Job 22, 24. Hey, hey, hey. Job 22, 24. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust. Ha! Brothers and sisters, why would God say dust? Why will he use dust? Eh? Then shall thou lay up gold as dust. He's talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'll never be poor in my life. There's something about dust that is known all over the world. Dust does not finish. If you wipe this place now, 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 shut these windows and the doors and go away. Come back tomorrow. Put your hand, you will still see dust. In other words, as, it, as you wipe it off, others are coming. You wonder where are they coming from? Then he's saying that you will lay up gold as dust. In other words, while you are spending, more will be coming. You don't know where they are coming. Ah, glory to God. Say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. He says you will lay up gold, dust, and the gold of a fire as the stones of the brook. My next verse. And did you ever study about Solomon? The day of Solomon. Did you ever study about David? The Bible says in the days of Solomon, silver was like nothing. It was not to be seen in the land. It was packed as some of you you have silver watch, silver chains now. In the days of Solomon, it was not to be seen in the land. Silver. The common thing was gold. They packed it aside. And they put silver. Put, put it on me. I'll never be poor. <laughs> oh God. Ah. One day, please just sit down and study the wealth of Solomon. You understand? It will help your mindset. The wealth of Solomon. One man had thousands upon thousands of chariots. About 12,000. 12, Do you know of any man that has 12,000 cars? He's not selling them his own and he has drivers for them that's today's language he has drivers for them he built the bible called stores where these horses and chariots are kept thousands of stores you now see a christian rich you now begin to insult you've not seen anything i'm coming you say it's blood money of course it's blood money the blood of jesus <laughs> you must be kidding, no? Tell your neighbors, yeah, I'll never be poor in my life. Ah, he's squeezing his face. See, I will never be poor. Who cares about how you are doing your face? If you want to be poor, be poor. While I'm talking, be quiet. I'm is my mouth. Can you sing it as well? Say, I will never be poor. Let him get angry. Say, I will never be poor. <laughs> Glory to God. And then say in the name of Jesus. What you does it is you just stamped it. No devil can change that. Your doors are open. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Alright. Yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. Go to 29th verse. 29th verse. When men are cast down. Then thou shalt say. There is lifting up, and it shall save the humble person. When men are cast, why will you not say there is lifting up? You are not pretending because you have the money. One of us are saying everywhere is dry. You say you dry. Where is dry? You just be wondering. Do some tongues. Calibor the city. Hallelujah. Hold on. Don't do like a poor person. Don't speak tongues like a poor person. Relax. Take your time. It's God that gave you the utterance now. Hallelujah. Number six. We're almost there. He gives you good health and long life. This is another way God blesses. Another way God blesses men. 
He gives you good health and long life. Isaiah 58 verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. He says your health will spring forth. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7. And Moses, Deuteronomy 34 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. His natural strength was not abated. That's blessing. It's not that you have money, but you are sickly. The Lord blesses with health. You have health to enjoy your wealth. That's real blessings. The Bible says he has no sorrow. His blessings makes rich. So you live in wealth, you live in health. Not you are in the hospital tomorrow. The other day you are flying to India to do what? Hospital. You are not really enjoying the wealth. Others who did not work hard for you to help you gather your money, they are the ones enjoying it. That guy would tear the chicken like this. It's not going anywhere. But you, the one that worked for the money, doctor said I should not eat chicken. Ah, have you ever seen rich men? Very rich. They are limited in what they eat. They don't eat this. They don't eat all the good food. They don't eat why? They say they are diabetic. But the guy is loaded. That part of it. Listen, one thing you should pray for always. Be praying for, for health. And you advise those who are rich that you know. Tell them to pray for it. That God will grant them health to enjoy their wealth. It's a blessing from the Lord. If you don't know it, you, you may not. You think, well, once I, I, don't have any, I don't have any problem. All, all I just want is money. Once I have money, every other thing is said to you. It's not. It's not. Big men, big problem. You know, there's a way the devil gravitates towards those who are not in Christ, who don't, who don't know their rights in Christ. He gravitates towards them to tamper with their health so that they will have something to be pouring money on. Glory to God. This is why you need the knowledge of the Word of God. Psalm 91 verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91 verse 16. Finally, number seven. One way that God blesses men. He blesses men with the good things of life. The good things of life. Genesis 24, 35. Hear the testimony of Abraham's servants. Genesis 24, 35. Hear the testimony of Abraham's servant. And the Lord had blessed my master greatly. And he had become great. And he had given him flocks. You see, God gives people things. And he has given him flocks and hurt and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses those were the things in their day do you understand it's not like today today what do you want to do with goats and cows so the lord has blessed you today and has given you houses cars yes who told you good things don't belong to you are you kidding eh you say, no, I don't want to be worldly. I don't want to use iPhone. Eh? Laptop belongs to the devil. Ah! How can you have big screen in your house? What are you trying to watch? Eh? That thing is the devil. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to be so loaded. Listen, God does bless with things. I can tell you. There are times that things will come to you on your own. You'll be minding your business, so... And someone will just send something to you. Say, ah, which one is this one again? Hey, hey, Lord. There was one month. I got things, got things, got things. Even my little boy gave me something. And I'm not joking. I was just wondering what's going on. Glory to God. Listen, good things belong to you. Don't deceive yourself. At your level, just be at your level. Work on yourself. Focus on the future and keep marching. But for you to reject them in your mind means that, hey, 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 hey. Don't reject them. I know there are pastors that will say that no, I don't believe in jet. What does the man of God need jet to do? I don't believe in jet. Mm -hmm. Your ministry is not yet big. When you have a big ministry and you are needed everywhere, or you need to pick something there, and you need to do something there, you need to visit the church there, and you have to do it all in one day. Three churches, you need jet. So no, a man of God should not write big cars. Eh? I hear you. As though when somebody is a man of God, it means it. You are joking. You, you are joking. Now, this is not to praise myself at all in any way. But just looking at this level that I am, I am, I've not even started. Sometimes I stay in one place for hours studying. I get up all my back like this, spinning me. 
and wicked you, you say that man of God does not need good things. Do you know what we go through before we come out like this? Everything you see us do here is just a small part. It just overflow. If you are not well built, when you come out, nothing will blow out. But in your corner, if something has really happened, when you come out, the little that will come out from you, people will wonder and say, ha? Huh? Because that's how, that's how God does it. You will not do small fellowship and great power is coming out. Yeah. So people will not hear you outside. People are inside, you are empty. No. You will be very loaded there. Like 20% of what you have there is what the people will see. Glory to God. No, this is important. You now say that man of God. Eh? Don't ever say it to me. I will cast out the devil from you. I'm loaded. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. Did I even explain this? Okay, I did. First Timothy 6 17. Final scripture. I want you to see what is in the scriptures here. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. Instruction, you must not be high-minded because you're rich. Okay? They be not high-minded. Not trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in your riches. But let your trust be in the living God. However, you have to remember and know it and practice that it is this God that gives us number one. He gives us all things. Richly, all things. Number two, purpose to enjoy. Eh? Hello? Are you seeing what's there? You are looking at me as though I forged it. Is there? Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy? NLT. See it. NLT. The last part. Who rich gives us all we need for our enjoyment? Eh? Uh -uh. Come on. Is that what's there? Life is sweet. Have you ever heard of LG? Life is good, right? In those days, we will grind pepper. We'll use, uh, have you ever seen those stones? I did too when I was small. Your mommy will push you there. You need to learn it. You need to learn it. Scope. And you are there grinding the teeth. Pepe. He said, no matter how much money you have, you still have to train your children to use that thing. It's poverty. You know, there's a way parents can give excuse for their situation. And help you to patch it and cover it so that you not suspect them and say, where are you when you're made? You would? So, they tell you it's training. Train them. But there's something called blender. No stress. You just put the pepper inside. At the press of a button. And you take it out. And you pour this in. Brothers and sisters. Tell me, which, which lesson do you want to teach that that blender has not taught? <laughs> I'll never be poor in my life. Now, listen. That was...